James Green, Short Series Shenanigans. So, we're on the next episode of the Buffalo Drill Press Gear Repair Rebuild. So, uh, I actually did this one off camera, welded it up. I used silicon bronze. Now, I am going to do show you guys the welding of the big gear. This one had two teeth, that one had one. Uh, I've got the other gear blank for this board. Uh, it still needs to be broached. I'll show that on video and I'll show cutting some of the teeth, not all of them. Uh, there's 31 teeth, and, but we'll talk about that in the other video indexing. So we've got our mandrel. Mandrels are very handy to have. This one happens to be made by uh, Western Tool Manufacturing Company out of Springfield, Ohio. This one goes from one and a quarter to one and a half. So the bore on this is, uh, I want to say, one and one inch, 625 thou, if I remember right. Uh, but anyway, so there we go. I'm just going to go in there and we're going to trim up this. Uh, we're going to start trimming it down the outside, dress it up. One thing you need to be cognizant of when using these, some of them come with a flat. Make sure you don't get that in your jaws. Now I've got you guys over here on the left hand side. Okay. Let me get this set up so we can move right along and get into it. Yeah, just make sure on that flat spot you don't get that one of the jaws over it. So, <clears throat> we are using some tongue alloy inserts from a channel sponsor, Hanmore's Tool Shed. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Hanmore, great people. Matter of fact, they're the ones I got the Square Master from. Lots of other tooling. Um, I'm using these old school, new old stock tongue alloy inserts. All right, there's the tech data on the back, if you guys are curious. Okay, they got a bunch of new old stock stuff. They've got a myriad of industrial tooling, uh, if you're looking for cat tooling, uh, ring setting gauges, I mean, the they've got a vast majority of stuff. Uh, they're on eBay, just look up Hanmore's Tooling and Hanmore's Tool Shed, him and his wife each have a, have a store. But these are the same, this is the style insert I'm using. 300 series TNMG and uh, <clears throat> 332. Now I've got several of the other styles of these tongue alloy insights that I'm very, very pleased with. Uh, the square, the SNMG, the rhombus, the CNMG, the diamond shape, the DNMG, and also the, uh, uh, there's some other, some small boring inserts. Uh, but I've been very, very pleased with the new old stock. I know for us hobbyists, uh, you go buy this stuff brand new and they're anywhere from you know, like $10 to $50 an insert. Uh, I've found that these tongue alloy inserts are pretty good all around. They work good in stainless, even exotic metals. And, uh, you know, hey, uh, it's good stuff. Go give them, give them a shout. They got a lot of neat stuff. So we're going to be using this one on the left-hand side to clean this up. <clears throat> we'll get started. I'll move you guys over. One thing I want to do real quick, and I'll move I'll show you guys since we're just sitting. I set this tool in here and I need to check the tool height on it. Okay. Now I've showed this before. Old school Edge Technology. Whoop. Sticker finally come off. Wow. Uh, but Edge Technologies. All right. You put that up against the piece and that on the tip. Let's check our. And I'm just going to go against the. Uh, right here. I'm just going to go against that. And we're just going to make sure that it is right on the tip. Yep, we're good. Because this insert is tilted down an angle, so you have to get right on the end. So it's good to go on its tool height. Which this the way I this set is set up. This holder here, uh, it, it's set up. I've grounds. I've machined some off the bottom. So if I have a one-inch bit in here, it sets flush on the bottom, and that's pretty much zero. So <clears throat> we're gonna get started. I know from past experience, get you a face shield. Those are handy, especially with working with this uh, stuff like this. It'll fly back, and you want to keep it out of your eyes. So I'm gonna have you guys on the left-hand side. You can see what I'm doing here. We're gonna hand feed it and get started.
400 to 60 RPM. close. What I like to do is come up here and let's see how much further we are to the teeth. I'm just going to touch off on one of these teeth right here, dial in. That's going to be pretty close right there. So that got us right on. We even skimmed a couple of teeth, which is fine. It's not a showstopper, but now we're going to come in here. I'm going to dress this side, and then we'll switch tools and get the right-hand side. I'm going to leave you guys there so you can see. I'm going to move it just, whoop, just a little bit so you guys can see me working here by hand. Actually, what I want to do first is I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to set my zero. Okay, and we're actually going to lock that down. good. Now that's just an open air dimension so that doesn't matter there. I'm going to back you guys up just a little bit here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to move you to the other side. Over here. We're going to switch tools. Switch camera position. And you guys can see me work. I will try to get it to where you can see it the tool from the other side. Let's set this over here. Get in here with this. Same thing, we're just gonna hand feed all this in here. I'm gonna try to get you guys, let me do this. Get you guys down here at the end, sorry. There we go. Come in 
thing here set zero so I know where zero is at for that skimmed a little bit which is fine now I'm just going to come in here just a little bit and I'm just going to touch with uh, the file just to get rid of that those little sharp burry edges Alright, so there we go. There's that. That was pretty easy. And let's back this off. Let's slide that out. E-stop is in. Alright, lights off. And we back you up here. Alright. So here we go. There's a close-up view of. Alright. Now we're going to come in and we'll set up over on the mill. <clears throat> I'll walk you over there and we will start the process on that. So carry you along over here while I watch where I'm walking. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to be a good angle right there for you guys and gals. All right. Let me get this off. So. Quick overview, uh, I've got my splash shields up here ready. Uh, blast shields, as Adam Booth calls them, which is true when you're doing stuff like this. So, I uh, got my flood coolant system set up. Let me go ahead and show you guys, this is pretty cool. So, these two holes on this side of the mill were already here, I'm presuming, from when someone had a DRO on it, okay? So, underneath this sticker here, there were already two holes. Okay, where someone probably had a DRO arm come out here, whatever. So they were quarter 20. What I did was, because this, as you guys remember, it used to have this magnet set up, which is this. Okay, I got this. Stan sent this. Stan Zakowski sent this to me years ago. Uh, it worked great, except every time I bumped this, it would fall off. I swore whenever I moved here, I'm going to mount it. So I was like, easy, easy, easy setup. So basically what I did, uh, because they're eighth inch pipe, is I just came in here with a piece of aluminum, drilled at the tap size, back here, back here, literally, and just so there's a chamber that can come up here, and now it's all set. And then I, had, I initially had it set here, but it was in the way of that bolt. If I ever need to get in here, I can just pop that off, I can get my wrench on, and tilt my head. So that's, and that's the reason I adjusted a little bit. So it's not going to be in the way when I'm doing stuff. Uh, that's why, and I've got plenty of more of this if I need to. This is actually set up for woodworking or air if you need to. It uses a lot of air, but it's the same stuff. I can transfer it over if I need more pop lock tubing. But uh, for this, we're going to have it set up in here. Uh, so handy little setup. And you just, I haven't, I've got a switch down here. I'm going to actually run, there we go, um, I've already got the box mounted. I'm going to actually run a, a switch here, cord in here, it's going to be waterproof over, so I can just turn off on right here, that's it, I haven't got to that stage yet, so right now it's still the old fashioned plug it in and unplug it. So slowly getting there, it's just going to be a household 110 switch, because that's what that is. So there's a little bit of an update on it. So yeah, I went through, cleaned up my uh, flood coolant setup from whenever I was uh, from moving, got it all set up. Get you guys set up over here. All right. So <clears throat> I want to talk a little bit about the setup and everybody has a different way of doing this. Um, I will tell you, this is a Brown and Sharp Zero. Uh, the Brown and Sharp Zero Ones are considerably larger and a lot heavier. This right here uh, is uh, about 70 pounds. The other one's about 106 or something like that, I believe. 
It comes with a book, and a matter of fact, let me grab and I'll show you guys. So, let's see, heat treatment. Having stuff in three ring binders is handy. That's one of the things I carried over from my military days, having three ring binders. Like, for instance, heat treat manual. Anytime I get ready to use my oven, I always pull it out. And something I always use other things too. But here's the manual that should come with your dividing head, okay? Should you buy a new one. Um, <clears throat> in the back of the book, okay, uh, it's operating manual and parts. It's the same depending on what size, regardless of what size you have. There's a lot of neat stuff on here. Uh, model, <laughs> it shows the specs and everything. I've talked about this before. Uh, it shows the differential indexing for the gears. If you want to do differential indexing and stuff that you'll need to get for the, uh, the mill on the end. And I do eventually want to invest in that. So if you happen to have some of this stuff out here for differential indexing, old school, I'm interested, get a hold of me by public email address, eagledustoff37 at gmail.com. I am interested in investing if someone has those gears. If not, I'll figure out what sizes are and I'll make them. But, you know, that's one of those things, if I can buy it, I could make it too, you know. But anyway, moving right along. So in the back of the book, uh, they talk about application of your change gears and different things for differential indexing. It shows your parts here. I don't know where you would order parts from, honestly. Um, but it does show what you're supposed to have. So if you have to take this apart, you know, you have an idea of, okay, where they go back. And that's good. Having the exploded view, especially of this, if you have to take this part and replace an item, it's good to always have an exploded view. Um, because a lot of this stuff can be available through local resources or you can make it depending on your skill, same thing. So, <clears throat> dividing table worm ratio, it's a one to 40 gear ratio. It comes with three different plates. Uh, this plate will work for what we need. There are 31 teeth on that gear, okay? I already set and counted them. 31 total, it's a spur gear, I counted it out. Uh, I went here to where it said, uh, 31 teeth, T, H, and then N. And it's kind of funny how they set this up, but it goes all the way through, all the way up to, you know, all these other, it's got a couple more pages over here. It goes all the way up to uh, 370 teeth, or actually 380 teeth. So you can cut up to a 308 from a, you can cut from a one tooth gear, <laughs> a one tooth gear. Hmm, I'm just kidding. Uh, it actually starts at a three tooth gear, you know, and then it goes, you know, six and it goes up from there. So from small up to 380 teeth, it gives you all the information to be successful at cutting spur gears. So this one, you, we just come in here and we find the number 31 and we have to do, and on the end, I want to explain this here because it took me a little bit to figure it out. So I'll show you right there. Uh, we're at under the number 31. It has 31 again on the bottom. It says 1 9-31 now one is the you go one whole revolution, okay? Uh, you go one whole revolution and then you nine is you go nine holes and I counted my nine of course I moved that uh, And that's your next step and then you lock your gear in let's say that was the ninth hole which you know I'm just trying to show you and on, on the 31 hole, okay? So that's where we're set up. So it's not the outside, it's the second inside group is where we're at. So that's to kind of explain a little how this works. <clears throat> Another way that I've cut gears before and done it, and I'll grab it real, real quick. I wanted to go over all this in this video versus the next one where we're cutting so we can just get straight into cutting. Uh, let me put, I always put this back in my book here so I don't lose it. That's just something that I use common. The heat treating oven and indexing manual I keep, I keep together. That's just a me thing. So another way you can do it, and I'll grab it real quick, is a rotary table. And I've got a six inch set in here with it. It's not the correct exact chuck, but it'll work. Okay. And I've showed videos on this before here. All right. It's a little dirty from the moving process. This isn't the exact correct way to have this. I need to actually make a correct mounting plate for this. I just haven't done it yet. 
I need to do it. Uh, that'll be something I tackle next. This thing needs to be cleaned up. But this can be bounded vertically or horizontally depending on what you need to cut or do. Um, yeah, I know this looks horrendous, but it actually works. Uh, you, you make do with what you got. I actually, needed, you know, it's just one of those things you just did it and got it done. Uh, but you have your, your directions here. Same thing, number, if you have just degrees, a simple way to do it, you could take 31 and divide it by, let's just do that real quick. So if we did, if we took 31 divided by 360 equals, whoop, let's try that. Let's try it, 360 divided by 31. There we go, that'll work better. So 11.6, degrees is what it works out to 11.6 so to do that you would actually move 11.6 degrees and you have your little indicator over here on the I'm trying to get my phone in my pocket you have your little indicator over here on the side and you would just count like 11 and a half or six you can go through <clears throat> just to verify your setup and I'm gonna go over how I'm lining everything up so this is another good reason to have friends out there. A couple years ago at the Bash, myself and James Kilroy, or not Kil uh, James Kilroy, um, Keith Rucker, my apologies, uh, came up on a pile of cutters, uh, slab mill cutters, keyway cutters, gear cutters, and I cleaned everything into Vapo Rust. It was a big pile of, hey, if you ever need a size, get a hold of me, vice versa. We have a standing user's agreement. Um, luckily, I happen to have in that set one that I needed. So it's already mounted on Arbor here. Uh, I basically went through the drawer, <laughs> the drawer and was like, okay, does it fit? Does it fit? Does it fit? Oh, yes, it fits. So this is actually like a 14, uh, it's a, uh, I've already got it mounted in here. Let's pull it out real quick and I'll, I'll tell you. There we go. I'm going to kind of clunk right on the deal. So it landed on that. So it's actually, uh, this will cut a couple of different pitches, but that's the cutter that I'm using right there. I'll let you guys let the camera so you can see that's the cutter that actually, and it'll fit a couple of different sizes. Um, I actually used my gear tooth gauge to measure that and I think I showed it in one of the other ones. Let me grab my gear tooth gauge. So if you're going to do any gear cutting, uh, it's a good idea to have these. There's a couple different ones out there. Uh, I have some, these are a couple different ones I have. Boston gear, Boston gear has some. And then I've got some, here's some other that are metal. Um, you can basically go through and you figure out I believe it's this one. Nope, not a 12. I believe it's a 10, 10 pitch, if I remember correctly. Bingo. So it's, and you have to figure out what degree. Is it a 20 or 14 and a half degree? And it's actually a 14 and a half degree because on both sides you'll have like a 20 and a 14 and a half. Those are the two most common spur gear uh, pitches, but it's the 10 and a half. I'll show you guys here how well, okay. See how well it fits. I'm gonna flip it over and show you the 20 degree incorrect. Now it's pretty close, but you can tell it's like, mm, I don't know. And you just come over here and go, yep, that fits a lot better. You see how it just rolls exactly right along? Now there's a whole lot of information out there about gears and doing the math, and it can get really complicated really quick. If you're like me, and math was your hard subject in school, because I had a really crappy math teacher, I always tell people that. I hate, oh, I hated math. Um, it wasn't until my college years and I had a tutor and a very, very good professor that really got me straightened out. He's like, I don't know why she was teaching you that old hard way. And he said, why? He said, and her process, her thought process, now this is the 80s, mind you. You're not gonna have a calculator everywhere you to go to do your thinking. 
computer. Here we go. Here we are, 2018, and we have, you know, the multi-process, more power, you know. So he's like, and this was pre-internet days, and he was like, there's this thing out there where there's this computer, you know, inter or communication system that's going to be worldwide pretty soon. And it's like, oh, really? He says, it's called the intranet, which it was at the beginning stages. And I was like, oh, really? That, that'd be pretty cool. We got it now. Everything we need, apps, there's gear apps out there. It, it takes the hard way to do it. But if you want to sit and do the math and create your own gears, it's out there. Lots of cool apps out there that are free to download for that. But I just like simple, cut it down, get you a set of gauges. Boss, I mean, they're out there. Look for them on eBay or Amazon. Um, and then you can figure out what you need from there. And, you know, that way it takes the, takes the math out. That's what I like. Quick, simple, easy, get past it, move on. So, uh, <clears throat> and this was the holder I made for it, keyway, everything, so it cuts. Now I did figure out the depth. Uh, it's gonna be 210 thousandths. And the way I did that, it's just real simple. But how do you figure out how deep it needs to be? Um, well, it was real simple. This is how I did it, whether it's correct or not. It's just the way I did it. So I get my zero it out. And I just go like this in the bottom and I bring right across the top and I go, yep, yeah, that's 218, oh wait. That had to be 218. I chose to go 210 because there was a gear on here I think that was, yeah, that one's 213. I went around and like these ones that I just kind of touched a little on the top, those are like 223, you know. So, and I took, and that one's 225. So I didn't want to go too deep first, uh, I, because this gear obviously has wear. That was another reason. I didn't want to go too deep. I can always go a little deeper. Like once I get done and look at this and go, okay, it needs to be deeper, I can go back instead of, oh, I went too deep. That's why I decided to only go 210 for this first initial round of cuts. So anyway, there's that. Let me put this away. Um, so the next one, next video we do, we're going to be in here, flood coolant, blast shields up, and I'm going to start cutting the teeth on that. So there you go. Thanks again for watching. Spread the word about my channel, you guys. Uh, I really appreciate it. I love being back on YouTube again. Look forward to seeing you guys at the Summer Bash. Uh, lots of great stuff is going to be going on out there. And I plan on being out there and uh, doing the uh, trade tables again. I'm going to bring a lot of good stuff like I always do. See you guys next time. Take care of yourself and take care of your family. Because remember, at the end of the day, you and your family is all you got. Till next time, get out in the garage, make some gears and do some brazing. This stuff is fun. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.